I will throw a question to you this evening. Why were you born? What is the one purpose why God allowed you to be here? Or he brought you here? Anybody jump in, tell me. Tell us, we want to learn from you why you are here. Why are you on earth? Why are you not in other planets? I am here to manifest the glory of God here on earth and to live in my highest potential. Okay, break it down to one, two, three. That is too big a grammar for me. I did not finish. I didn't finish grammar school, so that I don't understand. Break it down to one, two, three, why you are here. To realize your fullest potential and so on. And to manifest the glory of and to manifest the glory of God. What do you mean? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Give it to us in simple A, B, C. One, two, three. No, no, no. Leave this earth. You. 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 Why are you here? We already know what you've, what you've written in your PhD thesis. What you wrote in your doctorate program. I already know about that. I read it. But break it down for those of us who for those of us who uh, we need we need to we need to hear it in a simple something that somebody in primary school when you tell them they will understand you okay uh, for that honestly i don't know why i am here for this moment at this session for that then why are you telling us about you are here for the glory of god and to realize your full potential why were you speaking those grammars to us when you don't even know All right. Somebody else help us. Somebody else help us. Why are you here on the earth? I am here on the earth to enjoy the life God has given me. Good. That is easy. That's straightforward. I love it. Next person. Next person. Olachi, where is Olachi? Okay, she's not there. Somebody, somebody was speaking like it was her. Please tell us the the, the person who was speaking. Tell us why you are here. Uh, to be a light, to be who God says I can be, to do what God says I can do, and to have what God says that I can have. Okay, break it down. Break it down to what you really know is the reason why you are here. What is the dream? What is the plan? What is the meaning of it? What is the destiny? I know about all of that. I, I read I read your I read your your PhD dissertation. And I saw all of that. So that is pretty awesome. I love it. But then for those of us we who are still in elementary school, what is what does it mean? <laughs> what does it mean to be who God say you can be, to do what God say you can do? What does that mean? In line with why are you here on earth? Because that that means a lot, but it has to be broken down so that it can mean something. All right, somebody else help us. Somebody else help us here. Why are you on the earth? What are you doing here? Happiness. Happiness. Huh? Happiness. Happiness. Who is that? This is Sandra. Sandra. Sandra, I miss you. My goodness, you are. Hello. Wow. How are you? Fine, but I need happiness. If I got happiness, I'll have everything because everything will be 
Everything revolves around happiness. That is straightforward. I love it. Thank you, sweetheart. Thank you very much. That's a great answer. She is here for happiness. Do you guys see that at a particular time of the year, you will see mushrooms start to come out from the ground to celebrate their existence? And after some time, they all go away. At a particular time, you see different kinds of butterflies they come into town. After a while, they come to celebrate, to show off who they were meant to be. And after that, they go to somewhere else. At a particular time, you see a different kind of babies come to town. Different, different species of babies come and build their nests, make their babies, raise their babies like the one that came during, um, I think it was the day, I think it was on Good Friday. On Good Friday, the birds always return back here to be with me, the babies. Some black, beautiful bodies, babies. They will come and make a, they will come and make a, a nest inside inside the uh, the ceiling here. And you can hear them getting busy throughout the day and night. You know, you can tell that they are doing something in there because by the time you know it, they are going out, they are coming in and. Or can, they never send me any text message, they never send me no email. My phone they didn't ring for them to tell me they were coming, but now I'm getting used to when once it is the morning on Good Friday, I'll be in the balcony to welcome them. Because they always come on Good Friday morning. Very early in the morning, they flock in here. And they will be here for like two months or so, and then they leave and then they go with their babies and so on. You can tell throughout the night you see a lot of things while I'm sleeping. You hear a lot of commotion going in my ceiling. You know that they are making babies in there. And by the time you know it, you hear the sound of babies, the egg has hatched and all of that. And after a month or two or so, they are gone. I don't see them anymore until next time. They are celebrating life. They don't complain. How many of you have seen cats, dogs, camels, donkeys, babies, fish in the water? Any of the other creatures of God complaining? The cows out there in the middle? None. They are always celebrating their lives. They don't have time to be moody. They don't have time to complain. They don't have time to whine. They don't suck. They are just happy, celebrating life. They, are li they, they make life happen. They don't wait for life to happen to them. They make life to happen. You are here. The one word that catches everything is enjoyment. Enjoyment. Why do you enjoy? Because you are happy. You were sent here for happiness. You were sent here mainly for enjoyment. You are not here. All the other things you are doing here, all the struggles, all the commotion, complaint, competition, all of that is not part of why we are here. All the wars and political intrigues and lying and manipulation and divorces, dissolvings, all the kind of stuff that is happening is not the reason why we are here. You are here created to enjoy, born to enjoy. Why? Because you are happy. Because if you are not happy, you cannot enjoy. So happiness is at the core and the center of that happiness is enjoyment. If you didn't know this, you have to learn this. That is why either today or whenever you are ready, Suffering has to end. God must punish unhappiness and suffering and, and all these things that you've been dealing with. They have to leave you and you have to leave them. Because your attitude is going to determine your happiness and your enjoyment. If you want to live to enjoy, that's just where you are going to go. 
Let me give you an example. I have learned something in my ministry recently that really God said to me, I want you to take note of this. When some people call me and they honor what I'm doing by supporting me financially or supporting the ministry, some people support the ministry and support me, others just support the ministry, others just support me. It all depends. I realize that such people are so highly blessed. They have open doors. They hardly get sick. And those who seek to calculate, because I've realized that there's a lot of people who do not have the gift of intelligence. I mean, they have some form of intelligence, but they do not have intelligence that can make them um, rich. They don't. They have a little bit. That it is those people who are not sensitive. That is why being sensitive is part of what you look for before you enter into a relationship with any human being is whether they are, they are as that person is a sensitive person. Is the person sensitive to your need? You don't need to tell somebody what your need is. They sense it. That's how Rebecca got married. Rebecca sensed the need of Eliezer. And that's how she became the wife of Isaac. They didn't ask her to do something else. She sensed it. Abraham was not told by God to entertain three strangers. He sensed it. There are two ways you know things. Either you sense it, sensitivity, or you discern it, spirit walking through your mind. But a lot of people need to be given order. People like that who need to be given order, who need to be ordered, who need to be given commandments. I don't have any respect for them. They, they, can you imagine there are people who will ask me to go and minister for their needs, to fast and pray for them, and that they are going to send in their, their they are going to send in their money and they will run. And, and they think that they are smart. They do not know that anything I do for you, if you decide not to reward me, I recall it. They have no idea that that's what I do. They are so foolish that you want to go and deceive people in the world and you want to go and come and deceive me too. I recall those things. If I pray for you and I realize that you are hostile towards me, I recall the prayer and I watch. I make sure I see that one watch as the prayer returns back to me and then I destroy it. That's what I do. I never do things that I cannot recall. I never do things that I cannot take back. That's what people do not. They think that when once you do it, I might tell you that certain things I do for you is is. I cannot take it back. It means only if you are with me. If you are with me, that's how it is. Because there are certain things that I myself have to monitor it for you. That's why there are certain medicine that you have to be given that the doctors and the nurses have to monitor it. They have to monitor you, make sure that they are there to watch you. You are not to go home to be administered that medicine by yourself. No. There are certain things in the supernatural that I have to, I have to monitor it. I have to activate it and monitor it. If you rebel, I recall them. And you will see how your life will look like. And I'm, I'm just being frank with you. That's just the way this thing works. That's just the way it is. God gave Satan the opportunity of enjoying life, of having the best. He rebelled. God recalled his stuff. I mean, he can still he can still exist as a spirit being, but he has nothing. He's been stripped of all the best things. Demons too have been stripped of all the things. So why do you think that I shouldn't take back what is mine? What I work hard for? The main reason you are on earth is to enjoy. 
Big G, give me the part, the scripture portion. This is just an introduction to a very big, a very big theme that I can go on to show you several, several things in scripture. But this is just the introduction to it. Along the way, we might do something about it. Big G, read it to me, please. Genesis chapter 2, verse 10. Okay, she will start reading from verse 8 through 10 of Genesis chapter 2. And the Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden. And then he put, a, he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant in the sight and good for food. And the tree of the life also in the midst of the garden, and the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And the river went out, went out of Eden to water the garden, and from thence it was parted, and it came into four heads. The name of the first is Python, that it is which compounded the whole land of Havilland, where there is gold, and the gold of the land is good. This is the first time we are hearing about gold. You never hear, you never hear in the creation history that God created gold. You don't hear it. You never hear that God created oxygen and all the elements because they were already there before the, before the reconstruction. We are living in a reconstructed earth. Genesis chapter 1 and Genesis chapter 2 is both creation and reconstruction going on hand in hand. Repair. Restoration. That's what you find. Genesis chapter 1 is not just creation. It's repair. Restoration, recreation, and creation at the same time is a reconstruction of what was damaged, of what was broken. We never hear anywhere that God created diamond or gold, but you hear that there is already gold in the land because they were already here. Before we arrived, they were already here. The natural, the mineral resources were already in the earth before we arrived. Everything was already put in place for us. Go ahead. There is Ilium and Onyx stone. And the name of the second river is Gihon. The same is it that compacted the whole land of Ethiopia. See? We are already in Genesis 2. See, listen. Genesis 2. Adam and Eve do not even have no child yet. Yeah. <laughs> but you are already hearing about nations. You are already hearing about Ethiopia, Africa. He's telling you the name of ancient kingdoms. So that when I begin to when I begin to deal with Genesis, your mouth will drop from what you are going to see. It's already telling you this. It's already telling you where those rivers are. Go ahead, my dear. And the name of the third river is Hedekel. That it is. That, that goes towards the east of Assyria. Assyria, hmm. And the fourth river is Euphrates. Euphrates, yep. And the Lord God took the man and put him into the garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. Do you hear that? The man was a worker, a gardener, a farmer. To dress it 
to keep it, to maintain it. That's what we are called to do. We are the ones that make the earth beautiful so that we can enjoy it. You are put in a place of enjoyment and at the same time, you are to take care of what brings about that enjoyment. You are, you are not called to laziness and to procrastination. Procrastination. You are you you were you were created into you are born into riches, but your job is to maintain the riches, to make the riches stay, is to be the keeper of the beautiful things, to make sure they stay beautiful. Is to keep it, is to dress it. You are not to let it die. God give you something, money, cars, like we've talked about today in the, in the former broadcast. Your job is to maintain them, keep them looking good all the time. It's not God who is coming to do it for you. He's already provided it for you. Your job now is to maintain it. Why many of you have nothing? It's because when you were given, you couldn't maintain it or you allow others to come in that have no business to be in your life to come and destroy what God gave you. And do you think that God will be a fool to give you some more? But if you've repented, God will give you. He will give you another chance. And that's what he's going to do tonight. He's going to give you another chance. Let's go on. Is that the end of that reading? Yeah, the last one is, And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, Thou mayest freely eat, that is enjoy. But of the tree of, of the knowledge of good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it. Okay, thank you. Uh -huh. For in the day in the day thou shalt eat thereof, thou shalt surely die. There you go. There you go. So a human being was created to live on this earth forever. We were not supposed to leave the earth under no circumstances. Heaven and earth were joined together. That's how it was. So you see, before the humans were created, before we were created, the earth was repaid. Jesus and the Holy Ghost came and repaid the earth for us. I want you to get the picture. They came and repaired, that's the word. They came and repaired the earth and put back the things that have died out of the earth or were recalled out of the earth. They turned back the stars, they turned back the moon, they turned back the sun. The, the Holy Ghost came upon the ice and the ice stored and become flowing river because there was no flowing river after the after the destruction. We are not we are not talking about the fall. There have, been, there have been different falls that has happened. There have been the fall of Lucifer in heaven that resulted also in the fall of the earth. That tells you whatever is going up there will affect here and whatever is going up uh, down here will affect the other planets. And then there was the fall of Adam and Eve and that affected the universe and the rest of the planets. And then there was the wiping away, the cleaning away of Noah's time. So three has happened. Three big cleaning has happened. Three big falls have has happened big time. The fall of Lucifer that resulted in the destruction of the earth the fall of the human race, resulting in the manipulation of the devil against humanities. And look at what has happened, craziness and lunacy came over the earth. The thinking of human being was no longer godly. It became like the thinking of Lucifer. And then there was the craziness in the days of Noah and the coming of fallen angels to come and mingle with human seeds. And look at what happened. The rain, the flood. <sighs> a 
God repaired the earth for us, put everything in place. And not just that he repaired the earth, put trees everywhere, but also in one side of the earth, he planted very choicey garden. God is always wanting to give a human being a little bit more extra. A little bit more extra enjoyment. He gives you enjoyment. He gives you a little bit more tasty delicacy. So even though there was already everything, he went ahead to make some exclusive place. With them, with them, with them, within that place. The earth is already there, but he went ahead to make a garden. Now, this is the second time that God has made the Garden of Eden. If you didn't know it, you have to know it. When you begin to read what happened in past records, you see a little bit of it in Isaiah, Ezekiel, all that, Book of Job, all these kind of places. You will see that, you will hear that even Lucifer was entitled to walk through Eden. There was an Eden before. And what I learned is this. God never created anybody without giving you something for you to succeed with. And I write that down. God never created any human being without giving you something for you to use to succeed with. Never. And for those of us who are born again and filled with the Holy Ghost, you are entitled to Eden. Because there is another Eden. And that Eden is carried by somebody. His name is Jesus. Jesus carries an Eden. That's the third Eden. The first Eden was when Lucifer used to be governor here. The second Eden is the one we just read in Genesis 2, 8 to 10. The third Eden happened after the resurrection. Therefore, if you go to Jesus and you ask him to release Eden for you, to release enjoyment so that you stop struggling, then he will give it to you. Don't, don't start to think that you are unworthy. Please don't. Don't go there anymore. It's about time that you begin to go to him and say, Listen, I am yours. Create an Eden for me. Whether you want to use my gift to make it happen, you want to use other people's gift, you want to connect me with somebody, you want me to inherit, or you want to, you want to send angels to do it, however you want to do it, I'm ready, I'm willing. You carry the third Eden. Plant one for me. And you will see how, even though you have nothing, you're going to reach a point in your life where you're going to carry tremendous success. You were born to enjoy. See, he created all choice fruit, everything that the human being needed to enjoy. He had it. Animals to play with, he had it. A wife, a husband was there for, for Eve had a husband, Adam had a wife. It was all there. Everything they needed. Eden means completeness. So when I'll be doing the book of Genesis, when, I'll, when we'll be studying the life of these people, you will see the greatness of revelation that God has given to me concerning his word. Everything was in place. Maybe many of you do not even know that. The reason why Adam came first was in order for him to prepare for Eve to join. That's why it is wrong for you to marry a man who is not strong, who cannot defend you, protect you. Adam was created first so that he get all the detail. So that when the woman comes, you just join it and enjoy Eden and can follow the man whose job 
you do not hear anywhere where God said to the woman, you are the keeper of the garden, you are to you are to tend it, you are to keep it, you are to beautify it, you are to maintain it. It was spoken to the man. It was spoken to the man. The commandment for him to be on his guard was given to him. And he's supposed to pass the knowledge to the woman. See, Jesus prepared the, the Eden. I'm telling you who was creating. It was the Son of God that was creating. That, that you've come to see with me in Scripture. It wasn't the Father. The Father told His Son exactly how to do it. And He did. And then He passed the knowledge to Adam. How to function with these things. How to be a husband. Adam was prepared not to be a single man, but to be a husband. And he became passive. Do not marry a man who is passive, lack energy, doesn't have money. Don't marry such a man, please. Don't go out to eat with such people. You should also not go out or not have anything to do with people who are arrogant, braggart, people who badmouth you because they have money or material resources. You shouldn't also, they must, such a person must be somebody that you, so, somebody who is balanced. Adam is supposed to be where his wife was so as to guide her, give her proper guidance. Now let me turn it around. There are women who are also given the spirit of a man, the spirit to conquer. There are women like that who are born that way. God gave it to them. And they are the rulers while the man is a leader. The ruler is always the powerful one, not the leader. I'm a ruler. I'm not a leader. And that's why I'm looking for leaders to lead in the different things I do. The Holy Ghost Jesus and the Father are rulers. They are not leaders. Leaders don't, don't rule a kingdom. It's a king, a ruler that rules the kingdom. Wherever you see a leader, that thing can stand today and can be destroyed tomorrow. But wherever you see a ruler, that thing stands forever. You were born to enjoy. Everything has been prepared for you. Jesus died for you. He rose for you. Hallelujah. Yes, he did. The Holy Ghost came for you. The, none of them came for themselves. Jesus did not come for himself. The Holy Ghost didn't come for himself. God the Father exists for you. It's for you and the angels and the sons. And this makes complete sense. And before God will tell God, look, look, don't move me anywhere unless you have an Eden ready for me. Don't try to marry into suffering. It, it makes God unhappy. Don't try to move into location of suffering. And your parent tells you, you know, in our time, we had kids, we had food, we had warm food in our belly and we have roof over our heads. And so they want you to be the same way. Food, clothes, and a roof. And that's all you came here to do. Even animals are providing food, roof, and clothing to their children. I mean, they, they, I'm not saying that they go to buy clothing for their children. I mean, they are providing wonderful things for their kids. So that's not enough. God brought 
brought you here to enjoy so that you can focus to stamp, to put your stamp of authority on the earth, to produce something that will help humanity, to do something, to give guidance to humanity, something. You were, you were sent here to enjoy because without enjoyment, Suffering will make you not even to be able to concentrate and worship God. And that's why God knew this. He said, first let me make you an Eden. Thou hast prepared a table before me. By the time he reached the table was there, prepared for him. Please ask for these things. Because these are scripture promises. Eden did not cease when Adam and Eve fell. I know that God recalled it, but in Jesus, we got more than Eden because Eden was just food. Because that's all they needed. Eden was just the plant, the trees, the fruits, the vegetable, what they need for their survival. Nice place to lay down. Just, just be there. Celebrate life. But our time is more than food and clothing and a roof over our head. There is more. And for Adam, he is an agriculturist, the keeper of the garden, a gardener. And also, Somebody who tend the animals, who kept the animals also. Because we saw him naming the animals. He, he, he was the one that, he was the leader of the animals world. All the animals obey him. That's why animals went into Noah's ark. Because they recognized the power of human beings over them. Doesn't mean that because there is the fall, sin came into the world that you don't have the power of God over animals. No, you still have the power of God is there for you. The power of Jesus is available tonight to reconstruct. If God repaid this earth for you, then God is going to repay your life tonight. God is going, yeah, God is going to repay everything that has been taken. In fact, he's going to recall, he's going to take back, and he's going to produce in large supply everything you need to live a life of Eden. He, yeah, Eden was, I, God, wants to take care of you. That's the meaning of it. I want to take care of you. I don't want you to struggle too hard to take care of yourself. I want to give you good things. As long as you can maintain them, protect them, defend them, keep them beautiful like you receive them. Don't allow anything God give you to be wasted. That's the meaning of Eden. And everything God gives you is a test to see whether you can handle it well, then he gives you more. You are sent here to enjoy. Hallelujah. It doesn't mean that because your forefathers fell God, Adam and Eve fell, fell, that you are not still. You are not following Adam and Eve, you are following Jesus. Did you ever hear any time that Jesus complained that he didn't have money? No. Or did he hear? Did you ever see anywhere where <clears throat> any of the disciples of Jesus and Jesus, did you hear anywhere in the Bible that they were sick? Oh, no. Have you seen anywhere in the Bible where they were starving? Nowhere. No. So you look at the Bible to know how yours should be. So this is how you are to do it. 
when you get out of this conference tonight, I want you to find some quiet time, somewhere quiet to sit down and tell yourself what the girl from France told us tonight about the glory of God. I want you to tell yourself, I am here because God sent me here. I am here because God likes me very much. I'm here because Jesus really likes me. He loves me. He likes me. And his desire is for me to have good things so that I can enjoy life. I can have quality things. The best jewelries. I can live in beautiful homes. Why should sons of devils live in million dollar homes? Why, should, why can't I live in those houses and even better than where they live? Why should sons of devils be the one with the best convenience stores and banks and hotels and all this stuff? Why, why am I not having those things? Tell yourself, call yourself by name and say, I am God's glory. I am God's Eden. And then tell Jesus, establish an Eden for me. I want you to lift up your hand and begin to pray this prayer tonight. Begin to tell him those things. I am the glory of God. I am God's power. I am God's money. I am God's institution. Jesus, establish Eden for me. I want to enjoy. I want to enjoy. I do not want to suffer anymore. I want good things to begin to happen to me. I want to begin to enjoy and thank you for making me to enjoy. Begin to claim it. Begin to claim it. Begin to pray. Begin to pray and let's get out of here. Begin to pray. I can't to I am God's glory. I declare I am God's glory. I am here because you love me and you like me. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus, supply Eden again to your children. Supply us with Eden. Plant Eden for us. Make life very easy for us. We will not turn away from you because life is easy. No, 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 no. We thank you. We thank you for replanting. We thank you for supporting us with a new Eden. Thank you for making life easy for us. Thank you, Jesus. Amen, 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 amen. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, I release inside my belly rivers of living waters flow in the name of Jesus flow 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 hallelujah flow flow me hallelujah the Eden that is inside me I release you I command you to manifest Jesus I receive your Eden I receive your Eden. Thank you for planting Eden for me. Thank you for planting Eden for my partners. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for coming to vibrate in me, to move in my life, to move in the life of your people. And now, Jesus, you can now repay, plant, Make the life of enjoyment to happen forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. amen, amen, amen. Thank you. Let, me, let me share with you guys the vision that I'm having. Hallelujah. I'm seeing a vision. And this person is walking into a gas station, a petrol station. He's going to pay for his petrol or his gas. And I'm seeing somebody already, a sports car has already been delivered. A sports car is very beautiful and people who are getting their gas or their petrol are staring at you and looking at you. Yeah, they are looking at you. They are looking at you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for Eden. Thank you, Lord, for Eden. Thank you, Lord. 
I will be doing a lot of travel from now on in order to consecrate houses, anoint cars, in order to open businesses, to cut the tape, to declare your business started. I'm going to be traveling to many places to do that because it's on. Hallelujah. Make sure that those of you who are business class people, those of you who are businessmen and women, make sure that you order, you go and purchase the business class angel's eyes um, um, anointing oil. Um, when you receive it, you will realize that there are three crystals inside it, like stone crystals inside it, that stand for the power of the Father and of Christ the King and of the Holy Ghost. And each bottle is a big bottle. It's supposed to be a lifetime thing. Unless it finished, then you order another one. It's a lifetime thing. Um, is is amazing. It's, it's made for you until you order it, then it is made. When once the day you order it is the day that it will be done and placed on the altar and it will be anointed. That every oil is anointed with oil. That's how that's how I do it. There are other things I do to them that I cannot tell you here. But I'm just letting you know that you have to go and get that. It costs, I think it costs five hundred dollars, because it has to do with money. You are going to make a lot of money with it. That's what is going to open your business. That's what is going to keep you in business. Please go for it. Go for it. Your spirit is part of that oil, and an angel is attached to it. This is good. It's no longer that you start a business and the business fold up. We've passed that stage. That's why we are making these things. You cannot stand busy. You cannot start a business. You close it down. You buy a house, they repo it. You get a car, they come. You buy a house, they come and take the car. You buy a, a you buy a house, they come and take the house. You buy a car, they come and repo it because you can't maintain it. That's why we need it. And we want you to be educated in terms of revelation, how things are done. This is Bishop Edikai Mary wishing you a very happy weekend. I'll see you tomorrow morning at 8 o'clock Eastern, 7 o'clock Central for Sunrise Resurrection Service. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Yes, it will.